أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي جعل محاسبة النفس سبيلا إلى الصلاح وأمر عباده بالتقوى والإصلاح وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جعل الدنيا دار اختبار وابتلاء والآخرة دار جزاء وعطاء وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله خير من حاسب نفسه قبل الحساب ودعا إلى مراقبة الخواطر والأعمال قبل يوم المآب أيها الإخوة إن محاسبة النفس سبيل الأتقياء وميزان المخلصين الأصفياء بها يرتفع الإنسان عن دركات الغفلة والهوى ويترقى في درجات القرب والهدى فمن حاسب نفسه في دنياه نجا ومن غفل عن نفسه خاب وسعى إلى الردى أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن حصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فالعياذ بالله من عذاب النار إن شاء الله تعالى Our topic of this course is محاسبة النفس Accounting for yourself Judging yourself from the surface of the head. Imagine if death comes unto you today, at this moment. Do you think you are safe in the sight of Allah? Do you think the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who have piety, who have taqwa? Do you think you have it if death comes unto you? Immediately now. That is why it is necessary and is a requirement upon all Muslim to account for himself. Every Muslim must account for himself. Every Muslim must, must account for herself. And this is uh, why we will be discussing this as a tazkira for the person talking and tazkira. For the person listening, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. Al-Muhasaba in language, it means Al-Ajd, to account. And in istilah, it means An-Nadharu fi a'mal nafs Looking into the deeds of the heart. What have I done? What am I doing? Am I on the right track? If death comes unto me with what I'm doing now, will I see the pleasure of Allah? This is al-muhasaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoins us to account for ourselves, to judge ourselves before, before death comes to us. In Surah Al-Hash, verses 18 and 19, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد 
واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون الله says all you will believe fear Allah وانتظر نفس ما قدمت لغد and every soul should look into what he has prepared for tomorrow tomorrow is the day that they will ask of me and you and they will respond that the person is no more the day in which they will, they will ask of who is so 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 ah he used to be here before ah he used to live before now he's dead now he's no more every soul should prepare for that tomorrow the day of qiyamah when death comes unto you wattaqullah and allah repeat it again so as to tell you the importance of accounting for yourself the importance of having piety having fear of allah allah repeats the statement ittaqullah twice wattaqullah fear allah inna allaha khabirun bima ta'malun indeed allah will give you the information of everything you are doing on the surface of the earth and allah says wala takunu kalladhina nasu allah don't be like those who forgot allah fa ansahum anfusahum and allah made them to forget themselves ulaika hum al fasiqun they had they had they had the fusaq the fasiqun we pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us look at this ayah directing us to the fear of allah to accounting to judging ourselves to judging our deeds and our actions are they in consonance with what allah loves and his messenger if it is yes fahmanillah be thankful to allah but if it is no we have to reflect and change and decide to do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded in reality <coughs> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands that our heart the mind that we have is more to doing something evil than good the mind loves something that we make him happy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala uqsimu bin nafsi lawama most of the time when the mind does something that is bad it would always criticize in itself oh i shouldn't have done this ah why did i do this But the nafsu lawama is even a better a better soul because he recognizes that what he has done is bad and that is why he is remorseful of what he has done and nafsu lawama is good and why will you know that what you have done is bad is because you are reflecting is because you are judging yourself without this you can't know you wouldn't even consider that you have done something wrong the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says al kayis the smart person the intelligent person man dana nafsahu ay hasaba asaba nafsahu fi dunya qabla al akhirah the one who accounts and judges himself before the day of qiyam that is the intelligent and the smart person but the other wise the one that is not smart is the one who is forgetful who is forgetful of his purpose on the surface of the earth and that is the person that is not smart al hasan he said in the tafsir of wala uqsim bin nafsi lawama la yulqa al mu'min illa yu'atib nafsahu mada aradtu bi kalimati mada aradtu bi aklati mada aradtu bi bi shurbati wal fajir yamdi quduman la yu'atib nafsahu You won't meet a believer except if the person is if the person is eating if the believer is eating the question he will be asking himself is why am i eating this food if he drinks he will ask himself what do i want to bring out from this drinking if he wears a cloth he would ask himself why am i wearing this cloth there is a question to each action for a believer a believer is someone that is always at a lot and he has question on everything he does that is a believer but the one that does not believe al fajr he just does anything he wears he drinks he doesn't even know whether what he's drinking is haram or halal 
That's the difference. Al-Muhasaba, accounting for oneself, are of two types. We have Al-Muhasaba to qabla al-amal, the one that happens before you do an action. And Al-Muhasaba to ba'd al-amal, the one that happens after the action. Before The one that ha happens before the action is, you want to do an action, for example. There is a need for reflection, for, for, for you thinking if this action, after the end of, after doing it, it will result to something good or something bad. There is a need for everything you do, you have to think about it first. Most of the time that we regret on an action that we have done in the past is because before we do that action, we do not account. For example, a statement that you have made to someone who has caused the person a great harm in this life. And at the end of the day, you are regretting that you have made such a statement. But the question is, did you reflect, did you think before you said that statement? If you have thought well, you wouldn't have said it. And a believer, before he does anything, he thinks well. He judges himself. If I'm told this, will I be happy with it? If they do this to me, will I be happy? Definitely, I can't do it for someone else. If I'm told this, will I be happy? Definitely, I can't tell someone else. This is before an action. The one that happens after an action is categorized into three. One of them is muhasabatu nafs ala ta'at. Accounting yourself on an action of obedience. For example, you have performed salat al dhuhr After salat al dhuhr you need to ask yourself a question. The salat that I performed, did I actually perform it the way I'm supposed to perform it? The arkan salat were they well, well done? The sunan al-salah, the wajibat al-salah, all of the azkar I'm supposed to say, did I say? Did I mention them? This is muhasabat al-nafs, after an action. You are fasted. After the day, after you are breaking the fast, when you are eating, the time of maghrib, is not only the time of eating alone, it's also a time of reflection. I've been fasting since Tulu and Fajr. Did I really fast well? My fasting today, how did it go? Did I make sure I obey what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to, be, to obey when, when fasting? Those are the questions you ask yourself when you have done a particular action. The second one is muhasabatu nafs ala al-ma'asi. Of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullu ibn Adam khatta. Every child of Adam makes mistake, commits a sin. And the best of those who commit a sin is the one after committing the sin, he seeks Allah's forgiveness. Now, you have committed a sin. Did you reflect? Did you think? Or you just, okay, that's the past. Just forget about that. No. As a Muslim, if you have done something wrong, you reflect. Then you try as much as you can not to make that into real court the next time. That is why the Prophet ﷺ says a believer will not fall in a pit twice. Because after falling in the, in the pit the first time, he should reflect. He should ask himself a question. Why did I fall in this pit in the first place? Oh, I should try as much as I can not to repeat this again. This is muhasabatun nafs ala al-ma'asi. After you have committed a sin, think and try as much not to do it again. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Seek Allah's forgiveness as a forgiveness that when you seek, you won't go back there again. And that can only be possible if you are reflecting, if you are judging yourself, if you are accounting for yourself. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this easy for us. The third one is muhasabatun nafs ala amri. A particular matter in the deen. Whether the matter is hara, whether the matter is halal or mubah. The question is, if I do this, what reward will I get? Okay, if I don't do this, will I get a better reward than if I do it? Okay, definitely, I shouldn't do it. This is a way in which Muslims should, should do, 
to spend his, his days, his months, his years, his life entirely. Now, what are the benefits of accounting oneself, judging yourself before death? One of them is an nejat wal fala. Accounting for yourself before death will make you to succeed and will make you to be safe from the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, takhfifu al-hisab yawm al-qiyamah. When you account for yourself and you do the right thing here on the surface of the earth, it will reduce the account of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, you know that the day of Qiyamah is a day of reckoning. Everybody will be judged. But if you have judged yourself and you have accounted for your deeds, it will reduce the judgment. You won't have a lot of sins. You won't have a lot of problems in the sight of Allah because you have done the right thing before death. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu an, he said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Account for yourself before the day of Qiyamah that all your deeds, they will check it one after the other. They will put your deeds on the scale. Now that you, you still have the option, you still have the, the, the time to account for yourself, do that before the day of Qiyamah. وَزِنُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُوزَنُوا Measure yourself. Measure your deeds. Put your deeds in scale. Before the day that all the deeds will be put in scale. There is no turn, turning, turning points that day again. But here on earth, when you measure your deeds, when you put them in scale, okay, what have I done today? Okay, did I do more good than more bad? Okay, oh, today I did this, I did that. Okay, tomorrow, inshallah, I'll when you have done that, it will lessen and it will reduce that measurement on the day of Qiyamah. Al-Muhafadatu ala al-insan wal-wiqayatu min al-nifaq wal-fusur. When someone accounts for himself, it will prevent him from, it will prevent him from al-nifaq. Hypocrisy. Al-Fudayl Ibn Ayyad, radiyallahu an, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, al-mu'min yuhasibu nafsa wa ya'lam annahu wa ya'lam annahu anna lahu mawqifan bayna yaday Allah wal munafiq yaghfulu an nafsi fa rahimahullahu abdan nadara li nafsihi qabla nuzuli malak al-mawt bihi. He said, a believer is the one who accounts for himself and he knows that a day will come that he will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a munafiq, an hypocrite, is the one who does, is not even concerned about accounting for himself. And Allah should be pleased with someone who has already looked into his deeds and his actions before Malakul Mawt, before the, the angel of death comes. These are some of the things that a Muslim is required to do. Also, اكتشاف مساوي النفس وعيوبها وعدم الاكترار بالعمل If you always account for yourself, it will make you to understand that you are not perfect. It will expose your misdeeds where you need to work on, where you need to do better if you account for yourself. But if you don't do that, you think you are, you are the best. You think you are perfect. So it exposes you to some of the things you are not doing well, what you need to do better, what you need to adjust, that is when you account for yourself. But if you don't do that, you will think you are the best, you are doing it well. Also, When you account for yourself, it makes you to have respect and reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will, it will make you to understand that you are nothing. Because you know that here is a place for a particular time. It's temporal. It's not permanent. The permanent place is afterlife. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this easy for us.
Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Is it okay? Naam, we continue from, we've said al-muhasaba, accounting for oneself, is something that is required of a Muslim. What are the things that would help to account for yourself? We want to do this, what are those things that will help to do that? One is al-yaqeen, bi-anna Allah ta'ala muttali'u ala ma fi nafsi. Is it will give one the certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in our heart. Allah knows everything that we are doing. In Surah Al Surah Al Mulk, Allah says, Wa asirru qawlakum awi jiharu bihi innahu alimun bidhat al sudur. Whether you voice it out, whether you silence it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in the heart. So, accounting for yourself, we help you to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that you're doing. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 235, Allah says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ فَحْضَرُوا Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in your heart. Be careful, be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah knows everything, whether eating or overt, whether covert or overt, Allah knows everything that we do. Also, ma'rifatuhu annahu bi muhasabati nafsihi sayastarihu badan. He will also know that when he accounts for himself today, when he always takes note of what he does today, on the day of Qiyamah, it will lessen his skill, uh, it will lessen is is hisab is accountability and he will see you know fortune on the day of qiyamah if he does muhasaba these are some of the things and muhasaba accounting for oneself we give to the person also atafakkur fi as'ilat al-qiyamah muhasaba accounting for yourself will make you reflect on the questions on the day of qiyamah because the day of qiyamah is truth and it's true it will definitely happen. And it's not a joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولَ The hear, the organ of seeing, our reasoning, all of them, Allah is going to question us how we use them. You can see what you look with your eyes, what you hear, what you say with your mouth, your reasoning, Allah is going to question all of them on the day of the end. So accounting oneself, we give a reflection of, oh, these are the questions I'm going to be asked on the day of the end. I have to do better to ease my skill on the day of the end. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Takafur, He says, ثُمَّ لَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You will be asked on the day of the end, everything you have gathered. So these are some of the things at al al muhasaba helps one to do tadakkuru ahwal yawm al qiyamah it will make you to un to understand that on the day of qiyamah there are a lot of scenes scenarios that are frightening that that, that are threatening so this is what uh al muhasaba will help you to do also tadakkur al maut al muhasaba will help you to remember death to remember death one of the salaf, كان ابن عمر رضي الله عنه عنهما إذا فاتت صلاة في جماعة أحيا تلك الليلة كلها. If ابن عمر misses a particular salah, maybe salah al-Maghrib, salah al-Isha in jama'ah, the night 
he will wake up the entire night to pay back the salah he has missed. This is how the Sahaba, the companions, they do with accounting themselves. Oh, why did I miss this jama'ah? They will have to do something in return to replace what they have missed. But today, some of us, we are even ignorant of all this. And we don't even have, we are not concerned. Azur, we don't pray it in jama'ah. Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Then we combine all of them. Subhanallah. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. Al-Muhasaba, accounting for oneself, is a requirement for all, every Muslim because this is all, this is what will make you to understand that we are not just created for fun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a purpose, for a better place. This is a, a place to live, but there is a better place to live, which is eternal. That is Yawm al Qiyamah. When you account for yourself, everything you are doing, you know that there's a reward for it. And on the day of Qiyamah, there is a greater accountability. This is what makes a Muslim to be different from a disbeliever. A disbeliever can just do anything. He can just say anything. He can just go to anywhere. He can drink anything. He can eat anything. But a believer, no, he can't do that. Before he eats, he has to ask himself, what am I eating? Is it halal? Before he drinks, he asks himself, what am I, what am I drinking? Is it halal? Before he utters a statement, what I want to say, is it haram or halal? Before he looks, what I want to look at, is it haram or halal? These are the qualities of a Muslim. Accountability. Accounting oneself. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this easy for each and every one of us. Ameen. Allahumma la tada'u lana dhabban illa ghafarka. Wa la hamman illa farrajta. Wa la daynan illa qadayta. Wa la maridan illa shafayta. Wa la hajatan min hawaij al-dunya wal-akhirah. إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ أديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد لا إله إلا أنت أستكثرك وأتوب إليك إقام الصلاة